What's good, Knicks Nation? Salute. Today we had the season opener between the New York Knicks and the Boston Celtics, where the Knicks were hosting at Madison Square Garden. From the jump, this game looked ugly with both teams missing shots. However, the Celtics would be able to make up for their poor shooting and finally get on track while the Knicks continued to make a brick house. But somehow, the Knicks and all of their bricks would only be down by five points at half while shooting 34% from the field. And to be honest, the Knicks would have been in this game from the get-go if Brunson and Randall were able to knock down their shots, but they couldn't hit the broadside of a barnyard. Regardless, the Knicks would make this a game in the second half thanks to good, strong performances from none other than R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel Quickly. But even with those guys' efficient scoring tonight, it still wasn't enough to stop the onslaught of Jason Tatum and Kristaps Porzingis. Ultimately, the Knicks would lose a close one, 108 to 104, in the winding seconds of the game, coming down to free throws. I'm not concerned about this game. It's only game one, but it's frustrating considering that even for a poor shooting night, this game could have been had by the New York Knicks in the second half. And we just let it slip away because of t- fouls, missed shots, turnovers, you name it. Missed free throws. The missed free throws is what's killing me because that we should be able to knock down. These are still issues that we're talking about from last season. And based on all three of those things, the Knicks were just struggling all around. And and you and these are these are correctable things. The defense really wasn't the issue. It was really the the missed shots in the beginning, like stuff that Brunson usually makes. He was missing bunnies around the rim. Julius Randle was missing his shots, had a poor night shooting wise and had some timely shots, but then had some frustrating boneheaded decisions, like poor threes that he shouldn't be taking in the second half. I'm like, why are you taking step back threes when there's guys open on the perimeter? You don't, you, we don't need that at that moment. As our guy CP would say, we don't need that. Ugh. But Hey, for all you RJ fans tonight. And that was a guy who I was talking about with JD on the pregame before the play-by-play he played well. You know, he went eight for 20 from the field, two more shots, would two more shots that he drained. We would have had 50% from him, but he was knocking down his free throws. Out of all the guys that you needed to knock down free throws, RJ came through. He went, let's see, let's look at RJ's stat line for right now. RJ had 24 points, went eight for 20 from the field, knocked down two of his five attempted threes, hit six out of seven free throws, got you three boards, two assists, and one steal. Now, there was a moment where RJ made I thought a questionable play, even though I thought it was a foul on him. But still, there's a guy. I don't. I don't know if it was Brunson or Grimes was at the top of the key. I'm like, why are we forcing shots? There were moments throughout the game where RJ was also taking shots that were that you know wouldn't necessarily want him to go barreling down the lane against Christos Porzingis, who was having a block affair tonight. But still, he had RJ had a strong performance tonight. I was encouraged by his play. Tonight, considering that we were so used to him get, getting off to a slow start, but solid night from RJ Barrett. I thought that he had some good moments throughout the game. I thought for the most part, he was solid, making the right decisions. But you know, it all comes down to late game execution at the end of the day. But for what you asked, I'm not going to nitpick what he did tonight because the the performance was solid enough. And then our other guy, Emmanuel Quickly, another guy who, even though he didn't get the bag, I'm expecting Quickly. I'm expecting quickly to have a good season because contract year for a lot of players, that's when they start, decide to start showing out. And quickly, I thought he should have been in the game for a lot longer than he was because he was the only guy that was shooting efficiently from three. He went five for seven from downtown, hit seven of those 11 shots, only played 28 minutes. I thought he was deserving of 30 because, we, like I said, we needed the three-point shooting from him. But you got your six boards, four assists, got you 24 points tonight. That's the stuff you want to got that's the stuff that you want from a guy off your bench who was just second place last season in six man of the year voting. Emmanuel quickly coming through in in major ways tonight, defensively, offensively. This is why, you know, when we when we when uh, I was getting comments like, why is it doom and gloom? I'm not necessarily doom and gloom, but you just start to see the importance of a guy like Emmanuel quickly coming off the bench in a night like tonight's performance. And I just wouldn't want the Knicks to risk that in free agency because getting performances like this, when, like I said, we were in this, we were in this game. It it came down to just making a little bit more shots and 
quickly was right there with RJ helping us stay in this game. It was tough. Just wasn't, uh, just wasn't our night, man. It, you know, look, it's first game of the season. Nothing to get too high, too low about. If you want to start with the bad, it's free throws, free throws, free throws, free throws. It's carried over from last year. And tonight it was abysmal. But look, it's the first game of the season. You hope that guys will shake off the preseason rust and and get back on track. But you shoot 50% from the line, you deserve to lose the game. But nevertheless, they were in it. They were still in it. They were still in it to win it. And look, they were in a game. They were leading in a game in which their top two stars didn't have their A game. Neither Julius or J- or or, or Jalen were relatively sharp tonight. So, you know, again, you chalk it up, first game of the season. It just sucks that KP got revenge on us, man. 30-plus points by Porzingis. And, and we talked about this in our Game of the Week preview, man. And this game started off the way I figured it would. And, and that pick and roll with Porzingis off of any one of Boston's guards or their big two is dangerous. And I thought defensively they were really able to get after it. I loved how RJ and Quick played. 48 points between them. I felt like Quick, you know, I really wanted the story to be about Quick. I wanted to see the Knicks win the game. And I wanted Quick. I wanted that storyline for Quick, man, because every time he got the ball, I was just shouting, get money, get money. Like, that's my new nickname for Quick this year, man. I like it. It's going to be get money. And he was great tonight. I thought Quick was great tonight. I thought RJ was great tonight. But, you know, our big two just didn't have it. I don't remember the last time that Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle went to like, what, 11 for 43? That's 25%. And so, and they still, they still were in a four-point game. So how many games are you going to win this season when your two best players are playing that way? Right. Like it's not going to be many games. And yet they were in a four point game. The other positive is your young core players between Grimes quickly and RJ prayed relatively well, obviously, especially quickly. And in order for this team to elevate and reach that ceiling or that potential, you're going to need those three players to play well. That like you're going to have to use, you know, use those young players, whether it's in a move in, later in the season or, um, uh, if the team stays intact like they were tonight for them to reach their ceiling, I'm going to go like this. So tough loss, tough loss, but it's game one. And we, we have to give Jalen Brunson a little bit more respect. I'm hearing a lot of, well, this the league has figured him out and the defense and this and that and the fourth. However, do we know that, Jason Tatum a few seasons ago had a game like this versus Knicks. Remember where he went like eight for 22 or something like that? And everyone yeah. was saying that RJ Barrett is an elite defender. And a lot of people were saying, hold on, hold your horses. Jason Tatum just had an off night. If you look at the plays tonight, Jalen Brunson to me also had an off night. Yeah. He was getting a lot of shots that he's going to get. I don't think anybody has figured him out or anything like that. I understand Drew Holiday is the matchup, but it's not like Drew Holiday was guarding him every possession. That's another thing people are saying. Well, Drew Holiday locked him up. Well, Drew Holiday was guarding Julius Randle a lot of the night as well. So Jalen Brunson just missed shots that he normally gets. And so it's hard to evaluate that, the team, when your two best players have an off night and yet you lose by four points. Right, right. So I'm going to look at the positives. but. If you want an overreaction, a night like tonight is why, you know, people, you hear the Carl Anthony Towns rumors, you hear some of these other rumors, is because mm, he's going there tonight. Julius Randle can't come with it, man. You may have mm. to look at something else to space this team and get this team to the next level. Mm. So- Julius, man, he missed Grimes a couple times. That would have changed the game because he was, you know, filling his bag. And then, you know, part of the reason, you know, I think Julius struggled, he ain't going to spin cycle. He ain't pull out the spin nothing, move. But... Nothing, man. Like, what are you like? What's going on here, man? One for <laughs> like, five, I mean, five free throw like, tips. Julius Randle should have led the Knicks with like 11. Easy. Like, I mean, easy. you you got you got little little juju on you, man. And then, like, I, I don't know what. And look, Listen, listen, like, listen, I don't know what he was listen, doing. get credit. Listen, Drew Holiday, he, he's as tough as they come as defenders, defender. right? Physical, 
He's stocky. He can hold his ground. This is Julius Randle here. I need you to understand the the, the, the magnitude. Come on, man. Come on. Like, like Stop nine, me. 250. You got to eat that up, man. Like, it will at least suck the double team. Man. Like, he did a decent job, like, you know, picking his spots, kicking and spraying it. But, like, man, you had you had Grimes open a couple times at the top of the key, man, and he could have just one extra pass in the corner, wide open. But overall, I mean, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I, I thought, like, our judgment was kind of bad. We kept challenging KP. Like, yeah. at some point, you got to realize, yeah. dude is cleaning up everything in there. I but, also, uh, you I know, overall, I think they, we'll went, they got a little bit scared with KP in there, man. Like, you know, RJ reverted in some some possessions. I thought RJ had a good game, but in some possessions, you know, he's fading away on oh, yeah, drives sorry. on KP. Like, go in, go right at him. Try to dunk on him or something. Draw contact. Uh, they were treating KP like he was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Like, slow down a little bit. Well, you know, I, but you got to realize, you know, KP was amped. You know, he's not going to say much, but, you know, coming yeah. back to the guard. Like, when's the last time he played like that? Yeah. You know, the reality of it is, like, he was back at home. You know, I'm still encouraged. The reality, yeah. Like, our, our, our second unit played well. DiVincenzo, I mean, he looked a little lost out there, man. Yeah, like, yeah. I think he was a little tentative, pull, pull the trigger. Yeah. So I think, you know, it's game one, man. Come come talk to us, you know, 20 games from now. I, I yeah. think it's going to be a different story. Hey, you're going to get a chance to see them again in, in Boston in, in – uh... How many days, right? In, in, in these 10 games, you see Boston. It's like twice, five, so. five days, five yeah. days, something like that. Yeah. They, they can't rest on this. Easy they got to go down easy. to the ace Mac fire out of Trey and them and then get back on track. Then they got to go. See oh, Zion. yeah, that's easy. Then they got to go see Zion. So <laughs> we appreciate you guys. Welcome to another great season. Win, lose, or draw. We're going to give you guys a great show. As you see, we have a great panel. We have a great team. We have JD, we got Alex, we got Jake, we got CK, we got Jeff, we got all these guys, man. Knicks Fan TV, it's expanding. We are scaling up, and we are only going to continue to bring you guys great content. Number one show for the fans by the fans. Number one podcast for the fans by the fans. We'll see you guys on Friday. Remember.